Shalom. Yes. Greetings to you all. Beloved in Christ, how are you all doing? Compliment of the season. I hope you are all doing well by the grace of God. I'm here to deliver a short message. It's a very short message. It is time for me to deliver this message. It is time for me to deliver this message. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you this moment. Without you, we are nothing, O oh Lord. I pray you come and speak through me as you have promised me. That whatever I will stand, you will speak through me and you will use me to do what man cannot do. Father, let me speak of your wisdom. Let me speak of your counsel. Father, I pray that every soul that will log into this section father i pray that whatever word that comes out of my mouth let it touches their heart let them receive the word in a good face so that at the end they will bear good fruit to your glory in jesus Christ's mighty name i pray hallelujah god bless you all that have just logged in as soon as you log in i want you to share the broadcast for me i'm not going to keep long i did not give notification that i will come live today but I, it is due for me to do this live because you know when you read the book of Jonah, the Bible said there was a man that God Almighty sent him into the city of Nineveh to go and warn the people against their evil deeds, to turn away from their evil deeds. And this man decided not to go. So God delivered him into the mouth for a swallow, for a fish to swallow him. You know, sometimes God reveals so many things to us out of fear and, and out of uh, how people will use their mouth to uh, criticize you and out of what people will say, we do not deliver the message. But we know that when God sent you to say something or when God sent you to do something and you refuse, there is punishment. Anything that I've been doing, I don't do with my will. Any, anywhere that I've, I've been speaking, I don't speak with my will. And I do not say anything that I lies. I see as I say as I see. This is a revelation that God Almighty revealed to me two months ago. I said it. I brief it in our live broadcast during midnight prayers, but I didn't go deep. I did not go deep because I was still praying for him. But today somebody sent me a message that he himself, Jay himself, uh, tested on his timeline. And I knew it is time for me to speak because many people do not believe that Jay Israel was being manipulated. All the things that Jay were doing, all the apologizing that many of you saw Jay Israel doing, it wasn't, he wasn't doing it from his own world. He was being manipulated. And I will tell you the revelation that I saw, the revelation that I saw, that is giving me the audacity to say that Jay didn't do everything according to his own will. He was being manipulated. I was on my bed and I, I just found myself in a dream, in the dream world. As we've been going there already, share the broadcast for me. I will keep, uh, it's, all, it's, uh, it's just 20 minutes or 30 minute broadcast and we'll just go. I found myself in the dream world. So when I found myself, the Lord took me to a very big forest. And this is a forest that I've been seeing many of these charlatans own this forest. All of you that have been following me on my pages, Giga Global Prayers, Prayer Appear Gifting Ministry, Lioness Preachers, our page, all those that have been following me, I've been telling you about many of these false prophets that have been seeing them in a very big forest, that they've gathered a huge amount of people, multitude of people, that they have placed burdens on them, and they, they, they are being guided by these military men and, and these bounces that nobody can escape. So in this revelation, I found myself in a very big forest and in that forest is always a thick forest when I found myself there I saw a group of people and a young man was seated and they have surrounded him the people that have surrounded him were these body body men so the bounces mighty men they've surrounded this young man so I peep my eye I drew closer and I discovered that it is J Israel that is seated on a chair. They've, they've tied the hands at the back like how they handcuff people. They've tied the hands at the back. And he, he was seated on a chair. And these bouncers have surrounded him. And they were the people telling him, do this. 
If he refused to do, they were beating him. I sat there, I stood there, and I was watching everything that they were doing to this young man. And these bouncers that you see them, they are the charlatans. Let me just explain. I want to explain for you to get an understanding. They are the charlatans that we are trying to rebuke. They are the people that the devil has sent them to pave way for the Antichrist. They are the people that are paving way, that are announcing the ministry of the Antichrist. So they have the larger voice, they have the platforms, they have the connections, they have the influence, the charlatans. The false prophet that he was rebuking, the false prophet that he was exposing, they are the people that kidnapped him, they kidnapped his soul. Everything that J. Israel was doing, he wasn't doing with his own will. He was being manipulated. They surrounded him and they, they, they were the one telling him, do this. If you don't do it, uh, you know, when he decided not to do, they were beating him up. So when I saw the apology that this young man came and rendered unto one of the pastors that he exposed, I said, God, this thing that you revealed to me, it is serious. It is serious. He did not do that apology with his own will. He was being controlled. He was being forced to do it. In the dream world, he was kidnapped. He was kidnapped. J. Israel was kidnapped. And one thing about these false prophets in these days is that when you try to expose them, they will fight you back and forth. When you try to expose their evil deeds, their wickedness, the evil and the wicked things that they are doing, they will try all their best to make sure they silence you. If it is your platform, they'll make sure you lose your platform. If it is anything that you have, they'll make sure, they'll, they'll, they'll make sure, you know, they have the influence. They have the connection. So when you try to expose them or when you try to talk about their evil deeds, they try to attack you. Some of them will even come after you with their military men, with their body body men. They will sell you out. You cannot sleep in your home. You cannot live in your apartment. You cannot live in, in your comfort zone. No. They will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will be on your neck from head to toe wherever you go. Wherever you go. You know, they've made their life like we are untouchable. Do not dare. Do not dare. Because many of these charlatans, many of these false prophets, many of these... Uh, uh, False pastors, false teachers, not only false prophets, too. we have false pastors, we have uh, false prophets, false teachers. False prophets and false teachers, they are there. They are the people that God Almighty called them the wolves in sheep clothing. They will come to you in clerical. They will come to you with the name of Jesus Christ. They will come to you as if they are preaching. They will come to you as if they are inspiring you, but deep down within their heart, they know they have, they do not have the calling of God. Many of these people are sourceless. Many of them are fetish priests that, that used to exist. Many of them are operating under the spirit of witchcraft, especially many of the women that you hear them say, Mama, 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 oh, my children, my children, you see them going around about, going around about. Many of them are possessed. Many of them are operating under the spirit of witchcraft. Many of them are operating under the spirit of witchcraft. And some of these people have, they have, or they have joined a secret group. Some of these people that are, that are not using their witchcraft, some of them have, they have been initiated into that evil kingdom, into that kingdom of darkness. So they'll be using the name of Jesus Christ, but they do not belong to him. They'll be using the name of Jesus Christ to pray, to, 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 uh, to cast out demons, to do miracles, to do signs and wonders, but they are not of God. These are the people that came together to kidnap J. Israel. These are the people that came together to kidnap that young man just to silence him. And you know, all these things that you people were hearing, all of them were set up. They will set women. Oh, they will do this. They will do all kinds of things. And you know, when somebody is doing such a thing, instead of we believers to support him, to pray, to, uh, to pray, to assist him, to support him in prayers, we just listen to what he is doing. Nobody supports him spiritually. Nobody supports him in prayer. Nobody was praying for him. So they were able to overcome him because there are many. These people, when you see them, they are like, they, they are like ants, a group of ants. They are, so, they are many. 
There are many. So they kidnapped this young man to manipulate him. By thank God he's out. Jay is out. He is out. He is out. He is out. So all of you that have heard bad news, oh, he's sleeping around with women, he's doing this, he was manipulated. He was being manipulated by these people. By these people that you go to churches claiming they are pastors. By this sheep in wolf clothing. By this murderers, murderers, killers. Evil men, men with dark hearts. Men with evil hearts. They don't have a good heart too. Those people that you call them your prophets, Papa one, Papa two, go and see what they are doing in their secret place. Mama one, Mama two, go and see the wickedness. Go and see all these wicked things that is happening, kidnapping. You see, oh, a young girl, oh, this uh, teenage girl has been, uh, she has committed suicide. Many of them, they are the people that help people to go and do such a thing for them. They are the people. They are the one behind all these secret things. They are the one behind all this killing. Now, when you go to my nation, Ghana, when your child go out to when your child go out and a child have not returned, you the mother, you start panicking. You start panicking because many people need the soul of a virgin. Many, many of these evil workers. Workers of that kingdom, workers of darkness, they need the, 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 the blood, the spare part, the body part of a virgin. So many of them will be going around schools. Many of them will condole and connive with proprietors to kill innocent children. They are the people underground doing all this evil. They are the people underground doing all this evil because they have sacrificed their souls to the devil and at the end of every year, the devil demands something. At the end of every year, because they have sacrificed their soul to the devil for fame, for money, for influence, for, 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 for members, for connections, every year they have to give and uh, uh, they have to give sacrifice. Recently, I told you about a revelation that the Lord God Almighty gave to me where I saw a very big car like the Benz. It was, it, it was, it was picking people like how when you go to these stations that people use the uh, public transport. It picked people and it goes in the middle of the road to throw all the people into a pit. It will pick them. And you know, the Lord was telling me, this car that you see that is picking people and killing people, that it takes people that it don't take them to their rightful destination. It is a car that is working for these charlatans, false prophets. That is their end of year sacrifice. That is why when we reach the month of December, you hear a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of accident, a lot of accident. Many of them have secretly bought these cars, big, big cars that is working for them. They bought big, big cars that is working for them. So during Christmas, when you bought such a car and you don't pray well, when you don't pray without going out and you go and take these vehicles, you go and take these vehicles, you will not reach your destination. You will not reach your destination. If a group of people go and howl, it may be a church choir, it may be a, a single a, sing, a single group, it may be an ordinary group, that as soon as you go and howl this car, and you take it, you will not reach your destination. It will have accident, and all of you will die. It is a means of them offering their end of year sacrifice. It's a means of them offering their end of year sacrifice. A lot of revelations that God Almighty have been giving to me concerning these people. Concerning these people. The burdens that they place on the head of people. That they call their church members. The burdens that they place on them. Every day I've been telling you. Most of the problems that we go through. The church members go through that we attribute to witches and wizards. The witches in your father's house have no idea. They don't have hands in what is happening in your life. The witches don't have hands. It is your pastors. 
It is those laying hands on you. It is those giving you miracle waters. It is those that you are carrying them on your head as hair bands, as your as bundles, as stickers. It is those that they, they, they have posted some things for you to put it in, in, in uh, post it in your room that you are worshiping as a sticker of my papa. Claiming or thinking that that sticker is what carries power. It is that thing that is fighting you. It is that, that thing, that sticker, that bundle on your hand. That your papa sticker because you don't know the words they speak on their items before they bring it out to sell. You don't know the enchantment they make on their miracle waters before it will come out and, and, and perform miracles. You don't know the enchantment. You don't know how they miss items to get that miracle water. You don't know how they miss, uh, uh, how they manage to, to, uh, to, uh, to make that poster for people to be buying, buying, buying. You don't know the side effect. You don't know the consequences. Many of these churches, big, big, big churches, many of these big, big, big churches, let me, let me repeat, big, big, big churches with more congregation, many of them, when you go under their puppet, there is a soul crying day. Many of those big, big churches, those pastors that do not preach any sense, but people be jumping into people, their churches are full of cloud. Many of these people, when you go under their, their puppet, a soul is crying there. A soul is crying under their puppet. A soul is crying. You hear a voice screaming. The more the, the, the voice scream, the more the, the people draw closer. People becoming, people becoming, people becoming. They do all kinds of rituals before they pull cloud. They do all kinds of rituals to pull clouds. So you, that is baby Christian, you without the Holy Spirit, when you are there, you have indirectly sacrificed your souls to them. You have indirectly sacrificed your soul to the devil. You are a member. Recently, the Lord showed me a very big church. I don't know whose church is that. But when the Lord showed me that church, it's a very big church. And I looked through the altar. The altar, there was a very big seat on the altar. And a man was seated on that altar. On the seat on the altar. And the lady was lying on the laps, and another man was having sexual intercourse with that lady in the church. This is a revelation that I got early, early this month. Early this month, a very big church, a very big church. As God Almighty took Ezekiel to go and show him what the people are doing, what the people are doing in Ezekiel chapter 8, it is the same thing, the same God that took, that used to take the prophet to go and reveal the hidden, the hidden secret, the wickedness and the evil heart of men, men that we call them men of God today. The people we call men of God today, a very big church, a man seated on the church, lady, one lady is, Lying on his laps. And a man is having sexual intercourse with that lady. Lying on the laps of that man. Though I do not understand that revelation. But it shouldn't be in the church. This thing shouldn't occur in the church. This thing shouldn't occur in the church. This is not a, the church is not a place for sex things. It is not a place for sex things. That is why I keep telling people, I keep warning people at this end time. If your church do not transform you spiritually and physically, leave that church. If your church, what your church can produce or can give to you is prosperity, you are missing the way. You are on the broad way. And the Bible said there is two ways. Those on the broad way are heading towards destruction. Those that, are, that will strive to enter the narrow gate, they that will qualify for the kingdom of God. They that qualifies for the kingdom of God are people that walk through the narrow way. People that, that dwell with the word of God. People that live with the word of God. People that receive the message. The message of God. The message of repentance. The, the message of, 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 of sanctification, holiness. Giving your whole to God. 
not fornicating not fornicating now the churches today they are the people promoting fornicating fornication the churches today how can a lady wore, wore only 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 legging and be moving up and down as an usher in a church how can a lady wore a mini skirt a mini skirt exposing all her towels and be an usher in a church what do you expect to receive from said church last the spirit of last that is why many of you you attend church and come home and start masturbating that is why many of you you go to church and after you return from that church you can't sit without having sexual intercourse the spirit of last is being distributed today in churches the spirit of lust is being distributed today in many, many churches. So if you attend a church that they dress anyhow, walk out of that church. If the pastor is telling you serving God is from heart, the body has nothing to do. That person is that pastor himself is already filled with lust. Any pastor that will never teach the people to dress decently, he is the one of the pastors that are sleeping around with all the ladies. He is one of them. Because every man is enticed by what they see. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. You are enticed by what you see. You are enticed by what you see. There are so many pastors when they are on in front of the pulpit and they are preaching and these ladies are with their mini skirts, with their short skirts, exposing their towels, their beautiful towels, seated in front. Those pastors cannot preach. They are human beings. They are human beings. So any church that your pastor feels comfortable for you to swim in darkness, the pastor know you are fornicating. He will never preach against fornication. The pastor himself or that prophet himself is sleeping around with you. You are not married to that man of God. You are not married to that prophet. You are not married to him, but he feels comfortable to sleep with you on the same bed in a hotel. You are in the wrong church. You are in the wrong church. If you attend a church and the man of God is married and feel comfortable to propose to you, or if you hear that rumor that this man of God is dating this person, do your investigation. When it is true, leave that church because you, are, you found yourself in that satanic church. You have found yourself in a satanic church. You have found yourself in the red devil's church. The church where Satan is seated on the altar. The church where Satan himself is seated on the altar. Many of these churches that we attend, Satan himself is seated on the altar. So they will stand from one hour. They will never preach any, any, any sensible message. Only ways to extract money from you. Ways to take money. You need know, these charlatans, they are interested in your money. That is what Isaiah 66. The Bible said Isaiah spoke about these people. Isaiah said these people, they are greedy dogs. They are greedy dogs. They have everything, but they will come and take your penny. As 31st is approaching, you see how they are making announcement. Have you to see how the churches are making promotion? How they are promoting 31st? Come, come and worship with us. All these days you are supposed to worship God. Why are they promoting 31st? Because they know that 31st is the day that they will extract from you. They know 31st is the day that men, if in those that do not go to church, will come to church. They know 31st is their breakthrough day. Their breakthrough day, the day that they will break through financially. The day they will extract from you. The day they will take every money from you. Isaiah was talking about these people. Isaiah was a man of God. Isaiah, he was a man of God, but he used to speak. Isaiah 66 verse 11, Isaiah said, yes, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. Everyone for his gain. That is why they have their jets. They've been able to buy jets. 
Isaiah 61 verse 66, Isaiah 56 verse 11. They have, uh, they can, you know, they are able to buy jet, but they will come and squeeze the hand of you, the tomato seller, to bring the little that you are, you are managing to feed your home. They will come and take it. They are greedy dogs. They can't be satisfied. That is how they are. Those that have allowed the spirit of mammon to take over their life, they don't get satisfied though. Their wife is riding a Range Rover. Their first son is with a, 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 a Bentley. They themselves are, are riding Rolls Royce, such an expensive car that they can sell to give an employment to all those that are unemployed in the church. They will get that this huge amount of money to buy this property, buy this expensive thing and come and park in their garage. And if Every Sunday they will come online and deceive you. We are printing all your prayer requests. Oh, partners globally, take to oh partners globally. I want you all to sow a seed of hundred, sow a seed of two hundred dollars, sow a seed of hundred dollars, sow a seed of days, and bring your prayer request. They will take the paper, they will go and burn it. They will take it, they will go and burn it. They will not even pray for you. They will never even remember you in prayers because they are greedy dogs and they can never be satisfied. It doesn't matter the amount they've been able to get that in their account. They will still come for your one dollar. They will still come for your one city. Out of this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, charlatan, this, this false prophet, how many of their church members do they help? The people in the church, how many of them do they help? The widows in the church, how many of them do they help? It is all camera show. It is all camera show. They will do it or oh, oh, just for people to know that, oh, they are, they are giving this amount, but it should be regularly. The money that we are using to buy that huge, 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 expensive, expensive cars, we can use that money. We can, if you, if you are, if, if, if you can afford to buy a Bentley or you can afford to buy a, a Rolls Royce, how much is Rolls Royce? It's such an expensive car. If you can afford to buy such a car for yourself, you need not to take offering from the church members. If you are not greedy. You need not to take offering. If you can afford to buy a private jet to be taking you around, you need not to take offering from poor people. You need not to take offering. The offering that you get, you must gather the offering and use to buy things for the people in the church. As the disciples used to do. As the disciples used to do. But these people, because they are greedy, because they are selfish, because they can never be satisfied, they will take it. Their grandchild, that they, 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 their grandchild will be having a, a, a car in their name. Their granddaughter will be having a property in their name. Meanwhile, the poor woman in the church finds it difficult to feed the children three square meal a day. Yes, so when it is time for offering and this poor woman do not get money to sow a seed, they will not even call this poor woman to pray for her. This poor woman will not get access to speak to him. This poor lady will not get access because nowadays, especially many of the high, high charlatans, charlatans, both women and men, you can't call them freely. If you want to talk to them, it is either one-on-one. -on -one. And that one-on-one, -on -one, the list is $100. So if you want to speak to your pastor today, you must register for $100 before you can get access to speak to your pastor. One-on-one -on -one is $100. That is the list. When you go to some of the charlatans, we have gold and we have silver. Gold is 120,000 Nigerian Nara. Before you can speak to a woman of God, before you can meet them and tell your word, whether they can get, uh, they can find solution for you or they can, you have to pay such an amount. And such an, an, an amount is silver. It is, we have silver and we have gold. The gold is $500 before you can see a woman of God. A self-acclaimed woman of God, you have to pay $500. How much is the person earning? How much is the person earning within an hour of working? We don't calculate all these things. We don't care. Many of them that we are charging them such huge an amount, even they do not have documents in their, where they are working. They don't have documents. They manage to work. 
the money to get to work and this 500 dollars is somebody's one month salary the what the amount that they are using just a second because you want to have hello hello with them when you want a video call it must be sold silver it must be gold that is 500 dollars when you want audio call it must be 400 dollars the least is 100 dollars the least that if you want a one-on-one -on -one with a man of god or a woman of god is hundred dollar where is it written in the bible where it is this written in the bible the doctrine of mammon the doctrine of mammon they are greedy dogs so all the time their dream is to extort all the time they try to use techniques they try to use all kinds of ways all means to extract from people they use all means to extract from people. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. And wake up. Because these people that you, you call them your puppets, they are, they are misleading you to hell. These people that you call them your mamas that are not teaching you the ways of God, but teaching you how to gain money. When you die today, all the money that you have is vanity. If you die today, all the properties that you were able to acquire, it is vanity. When you die today, when you die today as a sinner, you, you regret. Because your money can never save you. Your money can never save you. Your fame can never save you. Your connection with, uh, with high rank of uh, people can never save you. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy 6. Verses number 6 to 10, it says, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. It says, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certainly that we carry nothing out. We brought nothing, and we will never carry anything. Anything that you are struggling yourself to get, anything that you are shedding bras to get, anything that you are, you are, you are backbiting, you are holding the heel of people to get, when you die today, it is finished. When you die today, you are not going with it. When you die today, your money will still remain in your account. It is earthly things. When you die today, the children that you, you, you try your best to visit a Sangoma, to visit Babalawo to get, when you die today, you are not going with those children. You will go naked. So the Bible says godliness with contentment. That means whatever God gives you, be content with it. If God bless you with a single room, be content with it. If God bless you with a BMW, be content with it. Do not go and sacrifice yourself for it. Do not go and join any secret group to get what you want to get. Do not go and sacrifice yourself because you want to get access to greet the president of Nigeria. What do you gain after greeting the president of Nigeria? Sometimes I ask all this, I say, why do we allow even the world to mislead us? What do you gain just to get access to greet, to shake hands with the president of Nigeria? Just, just that, to take picture with him, to post it on the media for people to know that, oh, you got an access to greet the president of Nigeria. And so what? And so what? Is it because of this that you are sacrificing your soul? Is it because of this that you have joined that evil group, secret group? Is it because of this that you have decided not to follow the will of God and to follow the commandment of God? Then the Bible says, I should ask you that when you die today as a sinner, when you die today as a murderer, when you die today as an extortioner, when you die today as a false Christian, where will your soul be? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 5 verse number 15 says, Naked we came, naked we shall go. We are not going with the congregation. Man of God, listen to me. Man of God, listen to me. You can do all sacrifice to be the world powerful man of God on earth. You can do all rituals to be the world powerful man of God. Remember, the most powerful man of God on earth is gone. Prophet T.B. Joshua is gone. Somebody that can see afar. He's gone. Now, if his deeds were not able to please his creator, he has regretted. If the late Prophet T.B. Joshua's deeds did not qualify him for the kingdom of God, he has regretted. All the big auditorium that he built, he didn't go with it. 
<laughs> he was having branches all over the world. He didn't go with it. He was having the largest congregation on earth. He did not go with the congregation. He went alone. He went alone. So man of God, listen to me. Instead of you sacrificing your soul for something that you cannot carry to the afterlife, your afterlife, it's better you do something to please God. It's better you live for God. It's better you hold that thing congregation that God have trusted you with. Rather than sacrificing yourself for the devil. Rather than doing things that, that will please the devil and reject your creator. Many of you are sleeping around with virgins. Taking their fluid and putting it in a pot for sacrifice. At the end, what will you gain? What will you gain at the end? What will you gain? Many of you are sleeping in caskets because you want to be famous. You want to perform miracles. You want to do miracles. It is our days that miracles have, have been, has been the order of the day that when you are able to perform miracle, people believe in you. Those days, miracle was free. The Bible said Apostle Peter wasn't a prophet, but his handkerchief was able to resurrect. Those that are dead, those that are sick, when he passed by, when Apostle Paul passed by and his shadow just fell on those that are sick, they get healed. Did you see them sacrificing their souls for that? Did you see them visiting a native doctor for that? Many of you that are in clericals, many of you with Bibles in your hands, you are fetishes. You are San Gomez. You are the reason why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verses number 21 to 22, that a day is coming, I will tell you, depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. And you scream and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I use your name to prophesy? Didn't I use your name to heal? Didn't I use your name to cast out demons? Didn't I use your name to perform signs and wonders on earth? And he will tell you, depart from me. I know you not you wake up of iniquity you wake up of iniquity as you are on earth working for the devil as you are on earth doing all kinds of things to please mammon the god of mammon have brandfold many churches today the god of mammon so many people go to church and they are going to pray for money many go to church they are going to pray for bmw people go to church they are going to pray for mansion they are, they are god provide money for me to build a mansion who rents and how can the landlord get money to pay their, they, 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 to, to care for their family? If all of us are supposed to be called uh, 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 landlords, who is going to be called a tenant? If all of us are to own our, 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 our own cars, who will drive for who will borrow? Who will borrow uh, uh, that taxi? How can a taxi driver feed his family? Everything that God does, he does for a reason. He does for a reason. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. He said, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let it be there, let it, let it be there with content. If you, are, if you wake up and you are able to get food to eat and get something to cover your nakedness, be content. Be content. Be content. The verse number nine says, but they that would be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So for the love of money is the root of all evil, which will, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see many men of God jubilate. You see them riding their big cars. They don't sleep at night. They don't sleep. Many of them are sleeping with dogs that are biting them. Yes. Many of them are sleeping with dogs that will tend to bite them. They will tend to bite them. And that bite will never be healed for the rest of their life. That is the, the commandment that the devil has given to them. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And the devil also said, if you love me, keep my commandment. So that is the commandment that the devil has given to them. Many of them have to carry caskets. Many of them have to disguise themselves into madman, madwoman, and go to where they dump refuse dump. Refuse dump to go and pick used sanitary pad. 
All these things, they don't get peace. So don't let it entice you. Do not let it entice you. False prophecies. False miracles. Miracles that they stage. They stage miracles just to deceive you. And you allow this to entice you. They stage miracles. They pay some people to come and, to come and act. It is like how these uh, actors have been paid to come and act. All these things that you are hearing, you are seeing, majority of them are being paid. They pay them to come and do. They pay them, they give them money for them to come and act, for you to believe that they are powerful, for you to believe that they can see afar, for you to believe that they are prof uh, prophetic GPLs. Even physical GPR. Physical GPR, sometimes it makes, it finds it difficult to, to find the real location. They use landmark. Landmark, that is what they use to find where you stay. Somebody will tell you, I'm a prophetic GPR, so it's GPRG. And you are, you know, you allow all these things. You allow them to use this to deceive you. Wake up. It's quite time you begin to look for God yourself. It's quite time you begin to read your Bible. It's quite time you wait, you, you, you wait upon the Lord. It's quite time you draw closer to God yourself. Apostle Paul speak to the people. He see, when you wake up every blessed day, work on your salvation with fear and trembling. Put not your trust in any man of God. Put not your trust in any woman of God. You know all those that, 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 that used to put their trust in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the life of the late prophets. Now he's gone. Where is your trust? All those that your trust was in him. That when your son is even sick, you have to call him. You never knew how to pray. You never knew how to meditate on your own. Where is he now? He's gone. You know, death is something that when death is coming to take you, it does not give you permission to announce it, to say uh, bye-bye to your family, to tell your family that I'm going. You no. Know, when death visits you, he will never give you access to tell the congregation that, you know, it is time for me to die. You. I want to tell you this message. No, you'll not get that time. You not get that access. Death, according to Job chapter 7 verse 7, the Bible says, remember, you are wind. As wind blows, that is how life is. As wind blows, that is how you are. You see the wind will blow and you breathe inside you. You feel comfortable. That is how you are. That is how you are. You are wind. The same thing your pastor is wind. Your pastor is not superior than anybody. Your pastor is ordinary man that, are, that God have, have, have given him a, an assignment. Your woman of God is like you. He is like you. She is like you. Yes. Don't put your trust in them. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. He alone will never forsake you. He alone will never turn his back to you. Live righteous life. Live righteous life. Make sure your name is written in the book of life. Because at the end, you may be a church goer. If your name is not written in the book of life, you failed. You may be a church goer. You may be an usher. You may be a keyboardist. You may be a, 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 an associate pastor. If your name is not written in the book of life, forget about the congregation you hold. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you'll be left behind. I keep telling people that are closer to me that when you wake up every in the morning, Ask yourself, Lord, is my name still in the book of life? Or my name have been deleted from the book of life? Is my name still written in the book of life? Please share the broadcast for me. Share the broadcast for me. Is my name still written in the book of life? Your pastor can tell you, oh, God have granted you heaven. Where did he find that? Was he able to open the book of life to see where, whether your name is in or your name is not in? Or he just used your physical appearance to tell you that you deserve the kingdom. God hasn't looked through the countenance. God sees through the hearts. God hasn't seen through the countenance. The countenance of man may look attractive. It may look like a saint. It may look like an angel. But the hearts, the Bible says inside the hearts, Within the heart, it's all lies, all fornication, all lust, all gossip, 
All bitterness, all grudges is harbored in the heart. This is the time. If your heart is not pure, cleanse your heart. If your heart is not genuine, cleanse your heart. If your heart has piled so many bitterness, so many grudges, so many unforgiving things, cleanse your heart. Because you don't know tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow you will not get access to say, Father, forgive me my sins. Maybe tomorrow you will not get a chance to say, Father, I have repented, forgive me. Tomorrow you will not get a chance to rely on miracle waters. Don't rely on miracle waters. Don't rely on stickers. If the Holy Spirit cannot protect you, sticker cannot protect you. Don't reject the Holy Spirit and believe in sticker. Don't reject the Holy Spirit and believe in water. You go for them to sprinkle water. Sprinkle water in your mouth and you drink it. Do you know what they used to make that water? That powerful water. Do you know the sources? Do you know who sat and made that water? Do you know how they managed to make it? Have they made it video for you to know how they made that water that you've been drinking? Do you know where it comes from? Draw closer to those much men. Much remain. Those that, those that bath people in the mortuary, in the hospitals, mortuary, before they put them in the mock. Draw closer to them and let them tell you your purpose that comes with big barrels to take people's uh, water from people that died mysterious death. People that died on timely death. People that died through suicide. People that died through fatal accident. People that died mysteriously, go to the mortuary, draw closer to any mortuary man that you know and ask him this thing that I'm telling you. Go to any mortuary man that have come to Christ and is confessing and he'll confess, he'll confirm this thing that I'm telling you. Many of these charlatans go to those places for miracle water. They go and take that water, come and mix it ordinary water and it will be performing miracles and you'll be drinking it. You'll be drinking it. You spend money to buy worms into your belly. You spend money. This water, buy it and put it there for six months. And see under that water what you will see. Buy those miracle waters. Just keep it on your table for six months. Just test it before you allow anything to enter into your body. Test it to know what is in that water. What is in that water. When you get the water, pray over it first to God and pray that God reveal to me what, where is the source of this water. Reveal to me. How did they produce this? How did they make this? Let God reveal to you and you know how they produce it. You will see it with your eyes. You will see with your naked eyes. Don't believe anything anyhow. Many of you cannot even sleep in your room without your purpose takers. It has turned to be your God. Your purpose takers is your God. Your, your purpose taker is your God now. Many of you, wherever you go, you carry your purpose bundle. You carry t-shirt with your papa inside. You are worshipping that thing. You are worshipping that bundle. That bundle has turned to be your God. They are, they are using items to replace the Holy Spirit in our life. That is the prince of the devil. The book of John, John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible said the devil came to steal, to kill and to destroy. They are using so many things to draw your attention from the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need any bundle. You don't need any, any sticker. You don't need any miracle water. You don't need any anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is with you and it's all powerful. It's all powerful. There is no power in any, any of these things. There is no salvation in any of these things. There is no salvation in any of these things. Salvation alone is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. Some of these, these devil worshippers that have repented, when you start listening to them, let them tell you where these waters that you people are busy buying with your money. Where they have been making it. Let them tell you. Let them preach you. Those that have worked for the evil kingdom. Let them confirm every word that we speak to you here. Let them confirm it. Confirm it to your ears. Let them confirm it. 
Let them confirm it. Lack of knowledge. People are perishing. People are perishing. People are serving human beings instead of serving Yahweh. People are putting their trust in human beings instead of putting their trust in man, in God. The one that created man, we don't put our trust in him. And some of these charlatans here, the people that have kidnapped your souls. These charlatans, as I bring my message to an end, they are the people that have kidnapped many of you, your souls, that you do not dream again. You do not dream again. They will never let you dream to see what they are doing. To come and expose them. They will never let you dream. They will kidnap your soul. They will kidnap your soul. Yes. They will kidnap you. Yes. The devil is working through them. They will make sure they kidnap your soul. So you can't dream. You cannot. You can't. You know, spiritually you become so weak. Spiritually you become so weak. You can't meditate. You can't study the word of God. You can't fast. If you are there and you can't fast, you can't pray. When it is time for you to pray, you start sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. You are weak, my sister. You are weak, my brother. And back on a seven days fasting. And back on a seven days fasting and cry to God, Father, a light. Uh, the fire in me ignite the fire in me father ignite the fire that has been quenching me the fire that the enemy has quenched father lighten it once again fill me with your spirit once again visit my life once again and back on the seven days fasting just crying to god to restore your spiritual life many of you physically you are moving physically you are beautiful you are handsome but spiritually you are dead revelation chapter three the messenger there he was a living dead. People know him. He was alive. But in the sight of God, he's dead. Many of you, you are alive physically. But in the sight of God, you are dead. You are dead. Your spiritual life is dead. Your prayer life is dead. You only go and gather to listen to fables. Fables. Because the spirit of lust have taken over you. The spirit of lust have taken over you. You are enjoying sex, enjoying sexual intercourse as somebody that is not married. As somebody that is not married, you are enjoying sexual intercourse and you think your spiritual life will be, will be on fire. You can never be on fire. You can never be on fire. When you are not married and you are enjoying sex, you can never be on fire. When you are stealing, you can never be on fire. When you are busy gossiping around, gossiping about anybody, when you are busy jealousing and hating anybody, everybody around, you can never be on fire. You can never be on fire. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me read a scripture to you. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me, let me start from the verse number 1 to verse number 5. It said, be ye therefore follower of God. As dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. It said, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming a saint. Covetousness, fornication, uncleanliness. Do let us hear it among you. As a child of God, let not it be heard. That means it shouldn't draw closer to you. So if you are, a, you, you call yourself a child of God, if you call yourself a member of the church of Pentecost, a member of the mountain of fire, though it is a mountain of fire, but the fire is not in you. Because you are masturbating. How can the fire be on you? You are attending mountain of fire, a mountain that is filled with fire, but your fire is being coined. How can you attain such a, a name? If you let the name, uh, uh, the name reflect on your life. You are masturbating. Keep her lovers. Keep her lovers. You are cheating on your wife. You are cheating on your husband. How can the fire of God dwell in you? How can you be raptured where rapture occurs? How can you be raptured? Should in case rapture occurs today, where will you be? Where will you be? Where is that? Where master? Sleeping around with all the beautiful women in the church as you're busy leading, leading, leading. You are, you are pointing your hands. Where will you be if you faint and die today? 
should in case Jesus Christ appears today, where would you spend eternity? Should in case your maker appears today, where will you spend eternity? That is the question you should ask yourself on a daily basis. Because nobody knows where you will die. Some of you will die by crossing the road. You get knocked down. That is how your destiny is. Many of you sit in a car, you sleep and you not wake up. Many of you sleep on your bed, you never wake up. Many of you go to the market, faint in the market, take to the emergency ward and you will not come home again. Everybody, your destiny is not the same. So prepare yourself. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Do not be deceived. Let not the world deceive you. Let not the world Deceive you, see, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it no once be named among you as become a sin. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Foolish talking. If your pastor says, sit on the stand on the pulpit, stand on the altar and begin to talk foolishly, walk out of that church. If you if you find yourself among your friends that love talking foolishly, talking about sex. Talking about sex, you know, nowadays the Bible says people love the things of the world more than the things of God. When you when you go to TikTok now, those that are talking about sex, talking filthy words from their mouth, they have more followers. Those that will talk about sex, where, 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 deep, 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 they have more followers because the devil likes filthy talking. And God said, let not filthy communication come out of your mouth. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. He said, let not, let not bad company corrupt your good morale. Let not bad company, bad friends that will always discuss about sex, bad friends that will always communicate about sex, sexual intercourse. Hey, this lady, the day I got her hair, how she was screaming, all oh, these are filthy talking foolish talking take it out of your mouth because the bible say all those that are talking foolishly not jesting which are not convenient but rather grieving giving yeah. of thanks it said for this ye know that no whole monger no whole monger no unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater had an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ Jesus our Lord. That means all those that do all these things, you can never inherit the kingdom of God. When you die today, you are dying as a sinner. Hmm? Just a minute, please. When you die today, you are dying as a sinner. You die today in the sight of God. God knows you to be a sinner, a foolish talker, somebody that talks about only sex. Many of you, your mothers at their age, that is the only thing they can produce. At the age of your parents, the age that they are now, that is the only thing they can give. Talk foolishly, talk about sex. They, they don't have any sensible advice to give to the youth. They don't have any sensible message to deliver. At their age, they are talking about sex. At their age, the only thing they can give is talk about sex. Yesterday, I told my husband he should he should just push me well, oh, he should do me this, oh, he should do me that. Oh. It is against the will of God. It is against the will of God. Titus chapter 2, verses number 2 to 3. Titus chapter 2, verses number 2 to 3. Go and read the scripture to your mother. Go and read it to that old woman that is talking foolishly. <laughs> Go and read this scripture to that old man that is always talking about says, says, says. Go and read Titus chapter 2, verses number 2 to 3. Say that the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, Teachers of good things. What is the Bible say? Say the old man and old woman. There should be teachers of good things. Why are we teachers of sexual intercourse? Why are we teachers of profane things? Why are we teachers of vain things? Why are we? Why have we become teachers of things that do not glorify God? That is the handwork of the devil. That is how the devil is using to steal the heart of many of you. That nobody is warning you. Nobody is teaching you. Nobody is leading you. 
That is why in our days, many marriages do not survive. Because those with knowledge and with experience that are supposed to talk sense, they are talking about sense. Old men with gray, they've painted, they, they, are, they dyed their hair, chasing small, small girls on the internet. When you go to many of these dating, dating sites, there you see old man, 67, 68, they're pulling the manhood, masturbating on phone. They pay the ladies to have sexual intercourse with them on phone. Old men that are supposed to preach the goodness of God. Old women that are supposed to speak the mind of God. They are the people. They are the people sleeping around with their young, young girls. They are the people having sexual intercourse with their daughter's age. With their son's age mate. Old women, gray. Young man is exposing your gray. Don't you know you are accursed? Mom, don't you know you are accursed? At your age, you are allowing your son's age mate to expose your gray hair, your gray private part. You are accursed. Leviticus chapter 18. Go and read it. Go and read Leviticus chapter 18. All women that are allowing young boys that can be your son's age mate to have sexual intercourse with you. You are accursed. You and your generation will be accursed. You will be accursed. Wake up. The things that we call it good in this day, it is evil in the sight of God. The things that we call it right this day, it is evil in the sight of God. When you go to our, our many of our African communities, when there is funeral, there you see old men, they know how to dance and to work. There you see old women know how to dance and to work. There you see that old men are addicted more than young men. Alcohol. Alcohol. They will smoke and drink and our young men are emulating from them. They will smoke and drink and young men are learning from them. They are learning from them. Wake up from your slumber. Wake up from your slumber. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses number 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses number 9 to 11. He said, I should tell you, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That means anybody that is not righteous, count yourself out of the kingdom of God. Count yourself out of the list of the people written in the Lamb's book of life. Your name can never be written there. Listen to this thing that I'm coming to mention. If you fall under this category, you can never have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. You can never have your name written in the book of life. When I hear these lesbian people talking about, hey, what is going on in the world? So are you people trying to tell me you don't know what is going on in the world? Are you people trying to tell me you fear death? You don't fear death. You people don't, don't fear death. You don't fear it. Because you are fighting with your creator. And that is the truth that you people do not want to hear. You are rebellious to God. You are a woman that have decided not to marry a man. You've decided to marry a woman to challenge your creator. The Bible says, who are you to challenge your creator? Who are you, oh man? Romans chapter 9 verse 11, uh, 11 going. Who are you? Romans 9, 19 to 21. Who are you to challenge your creator for you? You've already registered your name in the hell. You have registered your name unless you repent. I must tell you the truth. Hey, let them do whatever they do. That is the truth. Me, I don't fear anything again. I'm tired of, 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 of experience all the worst thing in life. I have experienced the worst thing. The worst thing. I have shed tears. I have cried. I have slept with empty stomach before. So whatever is coming, I have, I have experience. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9. He said, know ye, not, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. If somebody is telling you God can still open the front gate of heaven for you as a fornicator, the Bible says I should tell you, say I should close one of my eyes and open one and tell you, do not be deceived. Open your two eyes and read the word. He said, no fornicator. Who is a fornicator? You that are sleeping around with all men, all women that are not done the necessary. No fornicator, no adulteress. Adulteress. Adult worshiping, sorceress, magician, San Gomez. Astrologist. None of you qualify for the kingdom of God. 
those that use all kinds of items, those that are using pendant, those that are using metatron, those that are seven angels, those that are worshiping angels, the word of God says, I should tell you, you do not qualify the kingdom of God unless you repent. You do not qualify the kingdom of God. You have to repent. Adulteries. You are married. You have a farm. You have a garden. You are a married man with three side chicks aside your wife. You are dating three women. You are sleeping around with anything in skirt. You are jumping from one hotel room to the other. All the time lying to your wife. All the time lying to your children. Many of you cannot even afford to put food on the table of your children. Yes, too, you are seeking another woman. The Bible says, I should tell you, you do not qualify the kingdom of God. You do not qualify, man of God, that takes people's offering to give to side check, to go and spend holidays in an island. The Bible says, I should tell you, though you are holding the Bible deceiving people, but you do not qualify for the kingdom of God. You do not qualify for the kingdom of God. You do not. You do not. Abusers of themselves with mankind. You've married a dog, you do not qualify. You've married your ox, you do not qualify. You've married your camel, you've married your, 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 your blender, your rice cooker, madness. You do not qualify. I'm sorry, but you do not qualify. When you die today, find your way out. As you are there today, kissing dogs, giving your booty to dogs, giving yourself to dogs, Le Leviticus chapter 18 has warned you. That all those that are doing this do not qualify to be called children of God. And if you do not qualify to be called children of God, you cannot escape all the troubles that will come upon the people dwelling on earth. You can never escape because you are still in darkness. You are still in darkness. The first number 10 says, no tears, no covetous, no drunkards, no revealers, no extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. All doers of these things, you do not qualify the kingdom of Elohim. You do not qualify unless you repent. Unless you give your life to God. You going out with every beautiful lady, man of God, young man. Repent. Repent. Because tomorrow is unknown. You can die with that young lady in a hotel. Today there is a bad news running all on the media. When you go to many of the websites in Ghana, that biggest website, they will tell you a lady from America that was being invited down to Ghana by a billionaire. That lady has been found dead in, a, in the hotel room. When she was coming, she never knew she was coming to die. She never knew she was going to die. She never put her will. The will with God, she didn't get access to do it. She didn't get access to do it. And the same thing, many of you, it can happen to you. As the, as the man invites you up to a hotel, you can die in the course of having sexual intercourse. And you will not get access to repent. So give your life to Christ. Stop fornicating. Stop sleeping around with men. Work with your hand, young ladies. Work with your hand. Many of you think when I open my leg, that I'll get money to feed. That I'll get money to pay my bills. Is that I'll get money to take care of myself. Many of us, we are working. We are working to care for ourselves. We do not rely on any man. We are working. Work to get money for yourself. Work to get a little. That, is, that God has blessed it. More than giving your, yourself to men to defile the temple. You are defiling yourself. You are destroying yourself. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. Is there anybody that fornicates? You are destroying your body. You are destroying your body. You are destroying your body. Stop defiling the temple of God with filthiness. Stop destroying the temple of God with sexual intercourse, with lustful things, with filthy things, with masturbating, with smoking, with alcohol. With alcohol. Stop defiling yourself. Be pure and holy for God. Be holy for God. Be holy for Jesus Christ. Jesus has started preparing his remnants.
He has started preparing his own. He has started preparing those that he had chosen. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Is your name among those that are chosen? Has God chosen you as one of them or you are not being chosen? Ask yourself. Ask, your, ask yourself. Is my name written in the book of life? Or my name is not written in the book of life? When I die today, where will I spend eternity? Will I choose hell over heaven or I will choose heaven over hell? It is two way. It is either you go to hell or you go to heaven. It is either you walk through the narrow way or you go through the broad way. Where will you spend eternity? As I bring my message to an end, why have you let the world take over you? Why do you want to sacrifice your soul? Why do you want to use robbery, thieving people to feed? If they get you today, if they caught you today, they will stone you to life. If they catch you today, they will lead you to life. You will die. You will die as a sinner. You can use your hand to work. God has plans and purposes for you. The Bible says, I know the thought that I think towards you. It is thought of peace, not of evil. To give you expected end. No matter your condition, there is the time will change for you. No matter the situation, do not sacrifice your soul. If you are on the way to join this Illuminati, join this Freemason, join this secret group, my brother, I am advising you, stop it. If you're on the way to travel to Benin, to travel to India, to travel to South Africa, to, to, for rituals, for powers, to perform miracles in church, my brother, I'm advising you, you regret, stop it. Stop it. My sister, stop it. Stop it. If somebody is introducing any spiritualist to you, that demands bloodshed, stop it. Because no murderer deserves to enter the kingdom of God. No medra qualifies to enter the kingdom of God. No medra. No medra. No killer deserves the kingdom. You do not deserve. And the father you share after you share this broad, you, you, you know, your soul, your mind, everything within you will start convicting you. You will start regretting the money you cannot even enjoy. If any spiritualists have advised a young man to go and kill a toddler, change your mind. Because when you are being arrested, you regret the rest of your life. If any spiritualists have given you a, an instruction to go and kill your mom, change your mind. Let your mom's soul be precious uh, in your sight than money. Let the soul of that toddler be precious in your sight than anything that this world can offer you. Because you do not know the future of that child. You do not know what God has destined that child to be. You do not know. Don't let your current situation mislead you. Don't let the difficulties that you are seeing today, the, the time will change. Time will change for you, young man. Time will change for you, young woman. Don't be sleeping around to get HIV AIDS. Time will change. The season will change. We all started from a scratch. There was no hope, but God is making a way. Trust God. Serve God. Rely on him. The Bible says those that put their trust in the Lord, they are like a tree planted on the riverside. They will bear their fruit at the right time. God will never forsake you for trusting him. He will never regret. He will never forsake you. Serve God. Put your trust in God. Those that are messing out outside there, let them do. Those that are selling themselves outside there, let them do. You are a child of God. Say to yourself, I will never sell my soul. I will never sacrifice my soul. No matter what I'm going through, there is time and season for everybody on earth. There is time and season. The darkness will be over soon and the light will shine for me. Do not sacrifice your soul, brother. Do not sacrifice your soul, sister. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. If you're here and you are addicted and you want to take Christ, say, Lord God Almighty, today I take you as my Lord and Savior. Today, delete my name from the book of life, from the book of destruction. Write my name in the book of life. Wash me with your blood. Make me clean so that I will, I will, I will, I will be able to walk with you from today. Come into my life. Dwell in me. 
in Jesus' name. You are a born again. And the Bible says when somebody is a new creature, a born again, you become a new creature. All the old things are past. It says, behold, everything is new. You are a new creature now. All the old things are past. Don't go back to that ganja smoking again. Don't go to that cafe business that you have to do people again. Don't go to that keeper robbery uh, business again. Do not go and sit on your laptop and do people and steal from people's account. Do not do it again because you are a new creature. From today, trust God for everything that you want. From today, put your hope and your trust and everything in God for everything that you need from God. For God will never disappoint you. God will provide for you because he is our provider. He is our helper. He is our redeemer. He is the one. That will be with you in your afterlife. Many are dead and gone. They couldn't get this access. Many are dead and gone. They couldn't get this message to hear. They did not hear this message. They didn't get anybody to preach them. Many of them, they found themselves in the ghost churches. That they preach only prosperity and they've let the money here. Many of them, they were busy taking directions. They were busy going for directions so that they can do somebody directions that they can scam people. They didn't get access. Many scammers, many cafe boys, many scammers. They are dead and gone. They are dead in their sins. They didn't get access. You are a new creature now. All the old things are past. Behold, everything is new. As I bring my message to an end, I want to pray for you. Oh, God willing, tomorrow, tomorrow we will we'll meet for midnight prayers. God willing, tomorrow in the same time, we are going to meet for midnight prayers. I want to pray for you all. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, your children have heard your word. Father, your word has made us understood that once upon a time, a sower went outside to sow. As he saw, some of the seed fell on the wayside, and the birds came and devoured it. Some of them fell on the rocky place, and it couldn't get roots to bear good fruit. Some of them fell on thorns, it couldn't, it, it couldn't get root to bear fruit. But the one that, bear, that fell on a good land, it was able to bear a fruit, a, a 30, a 60, and a 100. Father, I pray that let this ways that have come into the heart of your people, let it bear good fruit. From today, Father, let them be able, assist them, help them, fill them with your power, lead them, guide them in everything that they do. Anything that is difficult for them to uh, let it go. Father, assist your people. Anyone here that wants to walk out of the mess that she is in, Father, I pray that you assist the person. Anybody here that have taken you as his Lord and Savior, that is so confused, that is that do not know where to go, Father, I pray that you lead them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you go before your people. You show them their ways. You teach them their ways. You write your ways on the table of their heart. You let them them know you from their childhood to their old age in Jesus Christ's mighty name. As they are moving from you, Father, I cover them all with a pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. If somebody is sick under the sound of my voice, Lord God Almighty, I declare, let your healing power touches that person. If anybody is depressed, let your power, my God, take away that depression from the heart. If anybody is suppressed, let your power in the ways that I have delivered, let it take away every depression let it take away every suppression in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it take away every depression, every suppression in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the Holy Spirit, my God, fill the heart of your people. Let them be able to do what you only like. What you love, your will. Let your will be the will of your people. Let your healing hand your restoration hand, your redeeming hand be upon them as they are moving from here. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray for you all. Amen. God bless you all. My name is Precious Appear Gifty. If today is your first time, when you go to YouTube, you get all our messages there. Search Precious Appear Gifty Ministries. On YouTube, you get all the messages there. All the revelations that God have been giving, all the warnings, you will get it there. You can also join us live on uh, on on 
God willing, tomorrow in the night, the same time, you can join us live for teachings, word, healing, everything is done. Everything. Everything that you need to hear. Anything that you need to know. Anything that you want. The Holy Spirit to reveal to you through his word. It will be revealed. God bless you. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.